Hey, what's up guys? I'm BTC. In this video, we're doing a countdown of the top five tips for team coordination in Overwatch. If you're new to Overwatch or if you're having trouble climbing the competitive ladder, then this guide is for you. Starting with number five, stay with your team. This is probably one of the most important things you can do in Overwatch. But far too often, people seem to want to go on their own Rambo missions that almost always end in disaster. The absolute best way to capture a control point is for your entire team of all six players to stay together and push all at the same time. Because of this, the best way to defend a capture point is for all six players to be grouped up as well. Now, when I say grouped up, I don't mean that they have to be literally right next to each other, but kind of close together. Simply grouping up isn't enough though. You also have to have correct team positioning. The tanks need to be up front, absorbing as much damage as they can. Right behind them are going to be your DPS, who need line of sight to the enemy team. And then behind them are going to be your healers, who need to have line of sight to all or at least most of your team. Now, a lot of times, your support will kind of trail off to the side and get picked off. Or maybe your DPS gets a little too aggressive and moves out in front of your tank, and then he gets picked off. Either of those situations will give the enemy team an advantage that they can quickly capitalize on. So make sure that not only are you grouped up, but you're also in the correct position. This is true for both attacking and defending teams. Whenever you have people spread out all over, trying to do some sort of crazy Rambo-style flanking mission on their own, those players are going to be a lot easier for the enemy team to kill because they won't have tanks to defend them or supports to heal them. When that happens, the match changes from a 6v6 to a 5v6, putting your team at a disadvantage. Now, especially true on defense, if you have someone that goes off on their own and dies, you just gave a pick to the enemy team. They now have the advantage to push in with a greater number of players to attack and capture your point. If you are able to keep your entire team together, it will make the next tip a lot easier. Number four, breaking choke points. So hopefully you've been able to keep your entire team together and if your teammates are in the correct position, you're halfway there to breaking a choke point. Now to be clear, again, your teammates don't need to be standing literally next to each other. As often, you should have at least one character approaching from a different angle, but the important thing is that all six players push at the same time. That person who is flanking can't just go in on their own. They have to wait for the rest of the team to also push in. This is best accomplished with a Reinhardt or a D.Va up front. Your tanks will put up their shield and move forward through the choke point. Most of the time, you will want to wait until your damage dealers are able to kill at least one of the defenders. And as soon as this happens, that is your cue for your tanks to move forward. It is extremely important that once your team starts moving forward, you don't stop. The most surefire way to never break a choke point is to have tanks that simply stand there with their shields up. Once you have the 6v5 advantage, you need to move forward. Another thing you will see happen over and over again is when one or two players will move in and die, followed by one or two other players who will move in and then die. The attacking team will repeat this over and over and never actually make it to the capture point. Don't do this. If you fail in breaking a choke point, have your entire team group up and try again. I made an entire video that explains how to break a choke point much more in depth than what I just said. If you want to check that out, you can click the little link up in the top right or check the description or the comment section of this video for the link. Number three, communication. For new players or those of you trying to climb the ladder, it's important that your team is coordinated and functioning like a well-oiled machine. A lot of times players simply don't know what to do and if there's somebody in the voice chat that can give them some assistance, you might actually win the match because of it. This means that everybody should be in the same team voice chat. Even if you do not have a microphone, you still have speakers or a headset that you can use to listen to other players. While you can use text chat to say some things, it's often not fast enough to communicate important mid-fight information. 
One person on the team should be in charge of organizing your attack or defense. That person should clearly explain what it is that your team needs to be doing. It doesn't have to be complicated. In fact, it's better if it's simple. The other players should use voice communication to announce when their ultimates are ready or the location, health status, and other important information of enemy players. For example, a Zenyatta could tell his team that the Farah in the sky has Discord or that there is a Reaper behind the team. Unfortunately, not everybody is going to be helpful with communication. Some people will use voice or text to simply complain about others or will ignore all suggestions and simply do their own thing. There are some things you simply can't control, and in these situations it's best to just mute or block uncooperative teammates and try to work with those on your team who are willing to work with you. Number 2. Using your ultimates and making combos. Some of the ultimates in this game are best used by themselves, but others can be comboed together with extremely powerful game-changing results. This tip flows from some of the previous ones. If your team stays together, and if they're communicating, then you can set up ultimate combinations that can basically win you the game. Some of the best examples of this are a Zarya followed up by a Hanzo or a Farah. A Soldier 76 coordinating with an Ana can set up a nano-boosted tactical visor that can easily lead to an enemy team wipe. However, there are other combinations that can be really bad and should be avoided. For example, if the enemy team is using an ult combo of their own, it's generally a bad idea for your Lucio and your Zenyatta to both use their defensive ultimates at the same time. With rare exception, one support ultimate is going to be good enough to keep your team alive. So in this case, you want to make sure that your support ultimates are staggered and not combined. Both your Lucio and Zenyatta should coordinate and decide which one of them is going to use their ult first, so that they're not doubled up. Sometimes a combo doesn't even need to use multiple ultimates. For example, a Sombra who goes behind the enemy team can hack a Reinhardt to make him drop his shield. This can cause your Diva's ult to do a lot more damage when their unsuspecting Reinhardt no longer has a shield up. Work with your teammates to create the most devastating situations you can. And lastly, coming in at number one is a proper team lineup. In Overwatch, there isn't any set rule that says you have to have this specific team composition in order to win. However, it has been proven time and time again that certain team lineups do have a much higher chance of winning than others. Unfortunately, you'll find in the competitive ladder, a lot of times people will play whatever they want, regardless of whether or not it's actually a viable lineup. The most common example is seeing a team that has far too many DPS heroes. The most standard lineup you're going to see is known as the 2-2-2, where you have two tanks, two healers, and two DPS. This is the most balanced lineup that you can have, as it doesn't put emphasis on any one role. An example of this would be a Reinhardt and a Winston for the tanks, Ana and Lucio for the healers, Soldier 76 and Reaper for the DPS. Another popular lineup right now is one with more emphasis on tanks. That lineup has three tanks, two healers, and only one DPS. While this version doesn't have as much damage, it has significantly more survivability, which is very powerful on both attack and defense. I would strongly advise against trying to run any lineup that has more than two DPS. While DPS heavy lineups can work at the very high skill brackets, they're quite weak in the low and the middle brackets. The reason for this is pretty simple. In order for those types of lineups to work, you have to be pretty good at the game and your accuracy needs to be high. The high skill brackets have that, the low and the middle skill brackets don't. Another thing to keep in mind is that not all tanks are created equal. Reinhardt is definitely the best tank for the lower and the middle brackets, but D.Va and Winston are also very powerful. On the other hand, Roadhog and Zarya are much better at doing damage than they are at fulfilling the defensive tank role. So if you use either the Roadhog or Zarya characters, then you should use them in a secondary off-tank position, almost never in the primary position. Alright guys, that is it for this one. I'm always uploading the latest in tips, guides, and Overwatch news, so make sure you subscribe so you don't miss any of it. If you enjoyed the video, hit that like button, share it with your friends, 
Thank you very much for watching. Remember, always, always blame the controller because it's never your fault.